Roger French of the Natural Health Society of Australia, an organisation not for profit that was founded in 1960. I've been his health director for 30 years, and one of the and the aim of the Natural Health Society is to explain to people how to live our lives from day to day so that we don't unwittingly cause illness and early ageing. And there's been a wealth of experience, we know that can be done. Now, being well, keeping well and being able to enjoy life to the full has four major aspects. Firstly, what we put in our mouths in terms of food and drink. Secondly, how we handle stress, which is not the events around us, it's how we react, so we do have some measure of control. Thirdly, regular physical activity. And fourthly, minimise the exposure to man-made chemicals. There's a lot of man-made chemicals that are very toxic and often they combine together to produce synergistically something far more toxic than was they were ever tested for. But <clears throat> the greatest factor of those that will achieve maximum results is what we put in our mouths because all of our biochemistry, which is about a million chemical reactions every second in every human being, depends for its raw material on what we put in our mouths. And this means that nutrition, eating the right way, eating a balanced diet of natural unprocessed foods, has an enormous significance for health. Now, the foundation of balanced eating is to maintain the correct acid-alkali balance. And this is not getting into chemistry. Um, our bloodstreams has an, have an acid-alkali balance that is as precise as body temperature. And if that acid-alkali level, which for the chemically minded people is at pH of 7.4 or close. If that changes very much, our health is compromised and if it changes very, very much, we would die. So the body goes to great lengths to maintain that balance and the tissue fluids will sacrifice themselves to protect the blood. But the biggest influence on our acid alkali level is our foods. Some foods are alkali forming, some foods are acid forming. And the reason that some foods are alkali forming is they have a preponderance of the alkaline minerals in order of quantity, potassium, magnesium and calcium. The foods that are acid forming have a predominance of the acidic minerals, chlorine, phosphorus <coughs> and sulphur. Now in front of me I have all the common food categories laid out. Fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, protein rich foods, some plants, some animal, starchy carbohydrates, sugary carbohydrates, fat concentrates, and miscellaneous items uh, for various purposes, drinks, and for fun. Now, the fresh fruits and veggies are the foods that have a preponderance of the alkaline minerals, potassium, magnesium, and calcium. They are all alkali forming, as long as they're ripe, fresh, and in season. All the other foods, basically, are acid forming, which means that to achieve that balance we need to eat enough fresh fruits and veggies to balance the acid forming foods giving us protein, carbohydrate and fat. But it so happens that the fruits and veggies are mostly water. They contain much more water than these concentrated foods and on average they'd be something like 85 to 90 percent water. For example, watermelon's about 93 percent water. Even lettuce is about 93% water. So we need a lot more of those foods to balance these concentrated foods that have very little water. And the ratio needs to be about three to one. So in a balanced diet, three quarters of total food intake would be fresh vegetables and fruits, ideally more vegetables and fruits. And just one quarter of the diet, although it's not laid out here in proportion, just one quarter of the diet, the food's giving us protein, carbohydrate and fat. And in fact, most of the fat we need is in our protein foods anyway. So the fats I have laid out here are concentrates that are really a garnish. So let's look at these foods individually. <clears throat> Looking at the fruits, the fruits are a cocktail of minerals, vitamins, fibre, other antioxidants and a level of sugar that makes them our perfect energy foods, especially in summer. But in winter, there are the winter fruits, citrus, pineapples, pawpaw and, and apples and pears. Now here I have a number of categories. There are subcategories of the fruits. There are acid fruits, there are subacid fruits, there are neutral fruits and melons. We all are familiar with the acidity of lemons. It's so high with citric acid that if a drop gets in the eye, <laughs> we know just how much acid is there. And it's a really good start to the day to have half a lemon, the juice of half a lemon in a glass of hot, warm to hot water, and it's really cleansing, really stimulating, and very alkali forming. 
I'll explain how an acid fruit can be alkali forming in a moment. Oranges. Oranges are a really good fruit, they're very pleasant. They do contain a, a, a chemical, a phytochemical, that can irritate the liver. Some people get headaches from oranges. Just watch that. Uh, mandarins don't have that problem. They're actually easier for most people than oranges. Another acid fruit is pineapples. And when a pineapple is ripe, the, the leaves will just pull out of the top and it also has a nice pineapple aroma. And, and with, with most varieties, it'll be that yellow colour rather than a green, as in the case of, of, of some. Now, grapefruit is another citrus fruit. It's a really good one. Doesn't upset the liver at all. Um, I think it, it's excellent. has a very high level of potassium. Um, it can interact with some medical drugs, but as a food in its own right, uh, it's, an, it's an excellent fruit. Coming into the sub-acid fruits, apples and pears and stone fruit. The stone fruit are just coming into season, so they're not looking all that happy at the moment. Apples are the king of fruits. They are just so good, and that red colour is a powerful antioxidant, the same as in blueberries. The stone fruit, peaches and apricots are yellow, and that's one of the beta-carotene family, the carotenoids, which are also powerful antioxidants. Grapes are a sub-acid fruit. Their sugar is, their fruit sugar is glucose, which is the same as blood sugar. Grapes need, the sugar needs no digestion. When we eat grapes, our blood sugar rises rapidly, and if we eat too many, uh, the pancreas will then actually dump our blood sugar, and, and we wonder what has hit us. We, we go into a hypoglycemia, which leaves us really flat with energy from overeating grapes. But in, in, in modest amounts, not as many as that, in modest amounts, um, grapes are an, are an outstanding food, and that red colour is a powerful antioxidant the same as these blueberries. And these blueberries are the richest source of antioxidants that are more powerful than vitamin C by 15 to 40 times, called anthocyanins. They are just super nutrition and they're also a good level of vitamin C. And there's a number of foods have those powerful antioxidants I'll mention as we go. Um, kiwi fruit, about the richest fruits in vitamin C, so they're an an excellent fruit to include. Mangoes, a fruit to die for, for those that happen to like mangoes, and I'm certainly one of those. Um, and again, that yellow colour of the flesh is an antioxidant in the carotenoid family. So again, good nutrition. Avocados can be sub-acid, and avocados are well known for their fat level, and some people say, oh, you shouldn't eat those, they're high in fat and cholesterol. Well, for a start, there is no cholesterol in any plant product, zero. Cholesterol is only made by animals and need not be a problem anyway. Um, the fat level in avocado is about, depending on the variety, about 16 to 18%. Now, that's quite high compared to fruits. For example, apple is about half to 1% fat. It, most fruits are very low, but avocado has this high level of fat, uh, which is exactly the kind of fat we need. So. What that means is you wouldn't eat a big avocado every day, but one that small or a bit bigger should be fine. Coming into the neutral fruits, which are bananas and papaya. <coughs> papaya is one of the best of the fruits, as long as, as, long as you like papaya. The, that, again, that beautiful orange colour is a powerful antioxidant in the carotenoid family. And pawpaw and papaya contain the enzyme papain that digests protein. So they are really good at these foods, are really good in the intestine. And they're also very gentle. They're so gentle that people with ulcerative colitis can often handle a diet of papaya where they can hardly eat anything else. Very, very good foods and they go well. Papaya goes well with apples and pears in a fruit salad or with, or with orange and pineapple in a fruit salad. The other common neutral fruit is, is banana. Banana is very high in potassium. <coughs> they say a banana a day keeps the doctor away. We say one of many of these a day and plenty of these keeps the doctor away. So that's an understatement. What's most important about bananas? Oh, they're one of the richest fruits. Um, grapes and bananas are both 18 to 20% sugar. So they're higher than most fruits in sugar. Very important that banana be ripe. If a banana is ripe, the fruit is fully formed, it's, it's fat, it's not miserable and stunted. Uh, there's no green whatsoever on the skin 
and when you peel it, the skin falls off as nature says, I'm, I'm ready to eat. And nature just plans it perfectly. And I really love bananas, so I'll save that one for later. Now, if a banana's green, in, in which case the 20% sugar content, content is closer to 20% starch, because the ripening, the starch converts to sugar. So if a banana is unripe and, and contains this starch form of carbohydrate, which is very hard to digest, so it's, they're not, not nearly as good a food as the ripe one, the fruit is angular, it hasn't fully developed, uh, there's green all over it, especially under the stem, and when you try and peel it, it won't peel, it, it just it won't peel nearly as easily, it often just breaks. So they're the three tests of ripeness for a banana, which is very important. The melons, these are neutral and they're very high in water content. They're so high in water content, they're best eaten alone. And look at this magnificent watermelon. That colour is lycopene, the same as tomatoes and pink grapefruit. It's a powerful antioxidant in the beta-carotene family, uh, well known for reducing the risk of prostate cancer quite dramatically. And watermelon is a food with, with a sugar level of about 6%, which is so low that eaten in a fruit salad with other foods, it kills that flavour. Eaten alone, it is just delicious for those that like watermelon. If you don't like a fruit, don't eat it. But it is a really good food eaten alone. Uh, for me, in summer, that's a perfect breakfast food. Uh, Rock melon, again another melon. It's a little bit richer than watermelon, uh, but again very high in water. That lovely yellow colour, an antioxidant. And all of these foods, of course, are high in potassium and magnesium, these critically important alkaline minerals. <clears throat> so coming into the vegetables.